Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life at La Forge. On today's episode, we're going to be getting the tillage done. So I have to get the corn sown before the rain comes at the end of the week. So you'll see Dad out again in the TM165 here behind me plowing. And you'll also see him sewing with the Vaderstad on the H210. Don't know how much I, uh, I don't know how much else I'll get to show in the video or what I'll get to take footage of for you. But um, basically, yeah, as much tillage as we can, we'll get it. And Dad will also talk to you a little bit about um, this year's corn sowing. Also, we have some footage of so Dad did some work on the topper. If you remember the topper that I was driving one of the last videos. Um, so before that he actually did some work on it and he told me that he took some videos on his camera but I cannot find them anywhere so I only have some video footage that I took and um, hopefully you'll be able to see what work he did on it but it's a pity because I think it could have been a really interesting video of that but yeah so he did some work on the top we'll show you that so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always if you do don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more episodes of our art farm and lives here in France So we're back at our topper here. It's a sliding, this yoke slides back and forth so you can head in around trees. It's a flail topper as I was showing you the other day. Now I was trying for a neighbour and he bent this bear that had slides on. It goes through this here. So I have a drilling rod there and I'm going to put that in it. That won't uh, break so just have to do a bit of better repairs here and just change this about uh, we have the timber bearings in now there they are so we have timber there we have the steel on top and bottom so the weight is not on the bolts <coughs> and we have a grease nipple and that plate in is to stop this big roller going from side to side <coughs> that's uh, that rolls there, so there's all the new teeth are in. Hang on, I got a light. So all the new teeth are in. And uh, that's it, that's uh, not too bad. So uh, it's, it was on the farm since we came and it's <coughs> kind of bulletproof. <coughs> but uh, it wasn't kept. I was shared with a neighbour, but now he's pulled out and uh, I'm just keeping it for myself so <clears throat> hopefully today should finish that and we're doing a small bit of Gary's hedge cutting and there's a yoke on the hedge cutter here the wire is always getting caught as small as the gap is here the wire goes in the little fence wire so we're just going to put a little bit of flat there it'll stop all that and he won't be able to stop it, he can stay going. That's it. So, that was it. Well, what do you think of France, Gary? Yeah, it's good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go tune in and when he's leaving and see if it's the same. So, that was it. Uh, that was all.
So, here we are in the morning. I was out this morning uh, doing a bit of power hurling just around the headlands where I had ploughed to make it easier for sowing with the Valdestrad. Uh, <coughs> now, th this power harrow, you can put a cord and sower on the back of it. I have an, an older Howard cord and sower, but it's not that good, so I was hoping to get another 3 meter to have that just for doing the headlands, but I just didn't find one. But animals, we can manage the way we are. That's our five scrape plough. It's a trailer plough. Uh, Gary, that was here for a few weeks, put on all new pieces on it. And you can see they're all wore down already. So it's very hard on ploughs over here, the ground is so hard. So, uh, the some of them I can change over. Uh, you can turn them around, alright. So that's the the plough on the TM. I have the the power harrow on the TL because when I go over to the other farm in the morning, like this morning, I was able to give out bales to the cows over there. So then, this is the Caneverland 6.3 meter roller, uh, and that's on the 7.7. So uh, we kind of leave them all. If, when we're at hay, we leave everything on, and when we're at cordon or so on cordon, we do the same, not to be switching around. So up here then we have, uh, it's a lovely sunny day, hopefully get the, the last of the cordon into the end tomorrow. Well, the last of the wheat will be today. Now that's the sprayer on the 83, so we do t after sowing the cordon, we spray. So that the front tank and all on it there. And it has GPS. So uh, I do always try to bring the camera with me, but either do forget to work it or uh, one thing or another. I don't know how all these other lads are able to drive drones and everything and work right it. I'm not. So uh, between the front and the back, it brings 2,000 litres and there's white tires on it. Now, normally I used to always use that tractor for with the car in the rail, but uh, it's better at the, it has the front linkage and all for the sprayer. So that works well, has a, an accordion boom. So then the 82 this year is on the cordon rail, the Valdestrad. Now, if you remember last year, people to follow, you were, there were, uh, we had planned to uh, go to a bigger cordon rail. So then, the last couple of years, cordon over here hasn't been very profitable, and we kind of came to a decision that we'd stick with what we have, so we're going to actually, there's a good bit of work to be done once all new this, and it wants there for, it works really well, it's very fast. Um, so we're going to tip it up, and it wants new tires, packer tires on the back, it wants, I think, five or six new tires, and we were pricing, uh, we priced other ones, and they weren't much better than that, and they were awfully expensive. So uh, now, as well as that, uh, the grants have all changed this year as well, and uh, there's, le there's more grants now for grass farming than there is for tillage. So now that wasn't the reason. We just said we'd wind down because. Uh, with the labour and the price of corn and the price of fertiliser and the price of sprays and talking about sprays then as well, uh, Roundup, there's a lot of new rules and regulations this year on Roundup. So uh, that's changing it as well. You can't spray Roundup here in October now anymore. So uh, that's tightening things up and they're on about in the next two or three year Roundup will go all together. So uh, that will make it hard as well to stay at tillage and control the weeds. <coughs> so this year we have about 74 acres and hopefully today or tomorrow I should finish it. 
and uh, then it's just on cattle and doing a bit of maintenance on sheds and that for the rest of the year. Well, and hedge cutting. So uh, I like the Valdestrad well, so I'm going to spend a bit of time on it this year. We have it seven years now, never give us an ounce of bother. And um, the beauty I like about that is it holds, there's some of our seed there, it holds uh, over a ton. So you can stay going for a long time. Whether if you had the, the one on the back of the power harrow, uh, you're filling it three or four times a day. And that takes up a good bit of time. Now the 82 was working real well with it, and it's well out to pull it, and uh, that was it. Now we have ploughed, we have ploughed most of the ground this year, uh, because we're moving into new ground because of a lot of wild oats and weeds last year. And we had the technician out from the co-op giving us advice and showing us the best way to do it this year. I'm not an expert at corn. Uh, and he was saying that probably the weeds are building up on everyone the last couple of years is uh, that's doing direct drilling is when you go out in September to do the spraying uh, there's no weeds there because it's so dry and um, so la last year when we went out uh, in September uh, there was actually nothing there really to spray around up only, only works if it, whatever is grown, it will kill it, but it won't kill the seeds. <coughs> so, um, even though we had a disc and all with her with her disc, uh, it still didn't work. So this year, we're, that's why we're doing a lot of ploughing. Now, there's two fields we didn't plough, and uh, th that uh, we just did it the normal way, direct through it. So as well as that now we're sowing, the last field we're sowing is in Tricky Kale. So we've got some new seed here for it. Haven't sowed it in a while. And uh, that's it there. I think we're sowing about four, four and a half hectares of it. Uh, the field is a little bit heavier than normal. Now Tricky Kale is a real survivor. Uh, it grows awful high. It grows right up to my shoulder nearly. Uh, doesn't yield as much, but to say it's, um, it's better feed than wheat for cows. Uh, and if the co-op is buying it off you, um, if the co-op is buying it, it's, uh, it's more expensive than wheat as well. So you have nearly twice as much straw and you have, well, you have less corn, less grain. So uh, there's the 5,000 and the 730. That was still doing a bit of topping. And uh, I'll show you, well, the disc might be going onto it now again. <coughs> so this is our uh, disc, our cover crop, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, six meters wide and uh, it's ha we use it uh, a good bit, not so much this year because we're ploughing uh, and it has a, a seeder there if you want to uh, do, put in cover crop after, after cutting corn, um, she just goes straight over it, does a nice job, it's hard enough to pull, normally I do have it on the 8730 or the TM, I have nothing else here fit to pull it. Um, it's not that old, it was only a year old when we bought it, uh, there's one disc off of there now, so uh, what do you call it, you won't see that in action over the rest of this year, but uh, we will have it out again, so that's all.
So, just about finished sewing for 2021. I don't know if Laura had the drone up there and I had. So what I have to do now is just go back up to the yard and get the TM and plow the headlands and just sew that. Uh, this field um, was in, uh, well, blade they call it over here, in wheat for the last two years. So this, is, plus it's a heavy, heavier ground than normal. And uh, so we're putting in this tricky kale as I was showing you the other day on the uh, so there's one old wet piece over there you might have seen it on the drone so when i'm finished sewing i have to do a job on that uh we'll have a little machine hasn't been wet the last two years i hadn't uh, not a bother with this field but that's uh, an old wet spot now and what happened was then uh the the wild boar i went into it in the combine and nearly got nearly sunk and I reversed out and then the wild boar went in and started playing in it and made a pure, I won't say. So um, that's it, I don't know what's here, uh, five and a half hectares. And uh, that uh, should finish it now. It'll be finished in an hour, then uh, Laura should be following up shortly with the roller. And then I have to spray tomorrow. Because it's rain tomorrow night. And... Uh, that's it then, back into the workshop and be doing some cattle. Okay. So that's that for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.